So very recently, my workplace bought an Apple Mac Studio Ultra with 192 gigs of RAM. And that's a lot of memory. And my mind immediately went to RAM disk. I figured you could make a RAM disk of 128 gigs and still have 64 gigs of working space, which is still plenty to do everything you might want to do. So RAM disks used to be a big deal back in the era of hard disks because they were several orders of magnitude faster. And I haven't seen a lot about them lately, so I wanted to do my own testing to see if in the era of solid state disks, they had the same level of performance or whether maybe they're, they're just not worthwhile anymore. And the other thing I wanted to find out about is when you buy an Apple Mac Studio and you choose between the Macs and the Ultra, the Ultra gets advertised as having 800 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth and the Mac says 400 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. So I wanted to do some comparative testing to see if maybe with the double the bandwidth that maybe the RAM disk is double the speed. So making a RAM disk on a Mac is super easy because the facility is built into the operating system. All you have to do is execute this command. There's only three parameters in this command that are of interest. This one, this is the disk format to, to make the disk. Now, if you Google how to make a, a RAM disk on the internet, you might get one answers that tell you to do this as HFS plus. And that would be a mistake because the HFS plus actually has lesser performance in some scenarios than APFS. So use this one, it's in the description. This is the name of the disk it'll have when it mounts. And last of all, this is, the size of the RAM disk in 512k bytes. So what you want to do is bring up a terminal like that. Uh, you want to copy the command. And in this case, it should be a 16 gig RAM disk. It goes through formatting and mounting the disk. And there it is there. Interestingly, if you don't have anything in the RAM disk, it actually doesn't take up RAM space. It's not until you fill it that it takes up the actual RAM on the computer. Okay, on to the benchmarks. So to give a frame of reference, I ran the Blackmagic disk speed test on the internal SSD, and these are the results, getting about 5,300 megabytes per second write and 5,000 megabytes per second read. And I created a 128 gigabyte SSD on the Ultra and ran the test, and it gave me 7,732 megabytes per second write and 9,557 megabytes per second read. That result seems a little bit disappointing, but I will say that I kind of have a bit of a hit and miss record with Blackmagic disk speed test, so I won't put too much credence in the results, only to show that, yeah, the RAM disk is faster, but I don't know, maybe it's twice as fast? Hard to say. Then moving on, I ran Amorphous Disk Mark initially on the internal SSD, and these are the results. So you can see uh, peak read and write speeds there, about 6,500 megabytes per second. And then when you get into the random results, uh, you can see it slows down quite a lot, especially that bottom line there. And here's the results for the 128 gigabyte RAM disk. And that's quite a big speed up. The read results are about three and a half times faster. And if you look into the random ones, especially for the QDeath one, you can see there's about, what, like a, a four fold improvement in the speed at least. So if you're doing something that involves a lot of random IOs on a disk, then potentially you'll get a, a pretty good speed up, four to eight times maybe, if you use a RAM disk. The next testing I did was file copying. So I have two test sets of files. One is a group of about 5,000 files that take up about 50 gigabytes. And the other test set is nine files that also take up 50 gigabytes. So lots of small files or a small number of large files. So starting with the small files, um, when I copied from the internal SSD to the RAM, it copied across at uh, 3,500 megabytes per second. And then when I copied it back the other way from RAM to SSD, I got 3,200 megabytes per second. Now I created two 64 gigabyte RAM disks and I did the copy between them. And when I did the copy, I got almost 4,900 megabytes per second. So a nice improvement. Then the next test set is those small number of you know, very large files. So when I copied from the SSD to RAM, I got four and a half thousand megabytes per second, give or take. And then when I copied between the two RAM disks that I'd created, I got 7,837 megabytes per second. Almost that also a nice improvement. These figures are not uh, mind-blowing. You're going to get somewhere between a doubling to you know, maybe as much as five or six times the level of improvement over an Intel SSD. Not the multiple orders of magnitude that you used to get from upgrading to hard disks, but an improvement that might be worthwhile, but given how much Apple charges for RAM, may not be worthwhile at all. 
The next testing is the testing between the Apple Studio Ultra and the Apple Studio Max and their two memory bandwidths of 800 gigabytes per second and 400 gigabytes per second. All things being equal, you might think we would expect the Max to effectively have half the results of the Ultra and therefore potentially be on par with the internal SSD. So I only ran the amorphous disk mark test just to give a frame of reference to see you know, how much of a difference there would between them. And just to refresh your memory, the Ultra's RAM disk gave these results. And here is the results from the Max's RAM disk. If you look closely, you'll see that the Max actually outperforms the Ultra in every test except one. Now, one of the reasons for this might be that there's no difference in the memory bandwidth, or at least there is no difference in the memory bandwidth between the Ultra and the Max for this particular facility, a RAM disk. The other reason might be that the Max, unfortunately, only had 64 gigs of RAM, so I was kind of limited into how big I could make the RAM disk. And in this case, I think it was about 32 gigs, whereas the Ultra's was 128. So potentially the size of the RAM disk may actually slow it down. Hard to know. But this test results show that the whole 800 gigabytes per second, 400 gigabytes per second, Ultra versus Max memory bandwidth is not even visible. I'm yet to see any examples where that claim of memory bandwidth throughput is demonstrable in any practical way on a Mac. Okay, summing up. I've shown that RAM disks are indeed faster than SSDs, but not by a whole order of magnitude, usually a lot less than that. I've also shown that the so-called bandwidth differences between a Mac Studio Ultra and a Mac Studio Max don't show up in any of the data that I've collected. If you've got a way of showing the memory bandwidth differences between the Max and the Ultra, then please let me know in the comments below. And thank you for watching.